If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to Change Toothpaste. That's at changetoothpaste.com, and it is toothpaste tablets just like paste but without the waste so let me tell you why i am making the switch over to change toothpaste now this is kind of wild because i just found out about all this myself so more than 900 million toothpaste tubes are entering our landfills and oceans every year on a global scale toothpaste tubes take over 500 years to break down and cannot be recycled A fundamental change is required and it starts with you and it is starting with me. So their sustainable toothpaste tablet removes the need for a tube altogether. Packaged in compostable pouches, they reduce the environmental footprint while giving you a clean, fresh brushing without any harsh chemicals. Change toothpaste tablets help you make a small change that makes a big environmental impact. Now, their mission started when they noticed the, how their kids show care for our planet. And they wanted to do their part to reduce the global plastic waste problem to make sure that the environment is safe and healthy for generations to come. So together, we believe we can create a global movement to protect our beloved planet. You brush your teeth each and every day obviously a few times a day. So once your toothpaste tube is finished, it's thrown into the garbage and you don't think about it. With change toothpaste, the tablets are just like paste without the waste, helping your teeth feel naturally fresh, clean, and prepared for anything that your day has in store. Thank you again change toothpaste and if you want to learn more about change toothpaste you can go to change toothpaste.com thank you again change toothpaste for being the sponsors of this episode and for listeners just wanting to try change toothpaste out you can use special code sheila capital letters s-h-e-i-l-a 20 to get a discount on your first order. Enjoy. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. Mm. I'm Coach Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Sandy Sembler. Sandy is an internationally recognized embodiment and feminine coach and creator of the Sacred She Program, empowering women to break up with toxic patterns, Mm -hmm. living their love, business, and success, and embrace a joy-filled, abundant life. Wow. Well, welcome to the show, Sandy. Oh, my goodness. It's so good to see you again. What a (laughs) night. I just, I just, your energy is always so infectious. So anytime I can be around you, it just feels so good. So thank you. Uh, You too. We've always had so much fun. We traveled Uh together um, and attended a lot of Donnie Epstein and Tony Robbins events. So we had a blast with all that and learning. So mm-hmm. coaches have coaches too. <laughs> exactly. So, yes. Yes. And one of the things I like to start with is this show actually was born from my new best selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. I wrote it in 2019 and published it in 2020. 
<laughs> so right in time, because we have had so many tough situations hit us globally. So I like to start off asking if you have a time in your business or personal life that you could share with the audience where you hit a tough situation and how you got back on track. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you added the, the personal as well, because I, I mean, I actually have something that will that will overlap both of them, which is great. So um, there's been several in the life of an entrepreneur. I just turned 50. So there's many times that I've turned my everything upside down and then back again. But the first thing that comes to mind when you ask me that is um, I was in the mortgage business and I sold my mortgage company when I got married and um, was doing a lot of real estate and such. And so that was really that was really something. But what happened is, is that I actually um, whenever I got a divorce, there was no that was right in the middle of a recession. So there really was no there was no mortgage company to go back to really in that in that space, at least where I didn't want to. So I was in this big um, healing journey. I had left uh, I had left a very toxic relationship and I was in a space of healing. And then uh, and that was two years in the making. When I came out of that space, um, I got into another relationship that was very similar to the first. And I had built a very successful um, online direct sales business where I had 30,000 women um, mm -hmm. that, that I was coaching and mentoring all around the world. And it was fantastic. And I did it, um, you know, really with a lot of grit, a lot of humility, um, grit and grace, I like to say, from the little girl from South Carolina, right? And, um, you know, we had a campaign about domestic violence awareness. I was, there was no victimhood going on at all. You know, you know a little bit about the backstory with that. And then um, as soon as I started dating again, I was like on a two year celibate space healing as I was building this business, raising my young 10 year old son, thought I was doing everything right. And in so many ways I was. And then as soon as I started dating again, I ended up in another relationship that was very similar to all the ones before. And um, it was like same song, different record. Mm -hmm. And it sent me down this spiral that I had never been in before because I had always picked myself up by my bootstraps, quite frankly. I've said this my whole life, my mom, my grandmother, you know, you can't grow up in the South and not use that term. Mm -hmm. um, it's inevitable, you have to. And, but what was amazing to me is that I, I really lost my moxie. I lost my zest. I couldn't understand like how I did it all right um, and how things went so wrong. And that's, you know, when I ended up having um, a, a very dear friend of mine who um, who recently passed, mm -hmm. she introduced me uh, to Tony and I had my intervention with Tony Robbins. And that's when I got introduced to brain patterning and why I was attracting the same people in my life, which completely changed the trajectory of my life, of my business, of who I attract in my life, meeting people like you, for example, and, um, you know, up leveling, up leveling in a way that, um, that nothing else would have would have worked, honestly, because I tried everything. So understanding the way the brain works and the way our, our we're, all, we're always in some type of survival mode, right? And so to be able to um, act in a way as if we were already there and trick this crazy nervous system that we have into mm -hmm. seeing and believing something different. That's beautiful, incredible. And something we all go through in certain times in our life where we hit these tough situations, especially in relationship. I, I recall also getting out of a not so healthy relationship right. and then ending up with the same guy, the same thing. And I was like, wait a minute, this is something is the only thing that needs to change is me. 100%. I mean, it really is that it, 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 we were the common denominator, but you and I know that, right? I mean, we've spent a lot of nights like talking and, 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 but even with the work with Tony, I mean, at some point, if it's all in your head and you don't get it in your body, um, then you will keep attracting it. And so that's, you know, when I got into the embodiment space that we have to be able to feel to heal. And so, um, I just find that a lot of women that, that are attracted to my work are very successful women in their own right and whatever capacity you view success, but there's still like this itch that needs to be scratched. And they have the same, I mean, anytime something happens more than three times um, and not just the same situation, but like in different scenarios, you know, you're just running a pattern. Mm -hmm. And that actually is very relieving. It's like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't necessarily my fault. This is something that could have been passed on from childhood or just through our DNA. And so then there's things we can do to, to shift that. But that really, for me, um, 
there were a lot of times in my life that I've been living in survival. I know that for a fact, but, but that was the, that was the time that it was so pivotal because then I was serving women and men as well, because I, you're working on relationships, but from a place of fullness, because I, it sent me down the trajectory of working with you know, teachers around the world. So I could, br so I could help them break up with the patterns like the, you know, like you said in the, in the intro. So mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for that. Wow, that's great. And I think that's something that it happens where, at least for me, it was a time where I needed the break and to really work on healing myself. And I yes. think about so many people lovingly came to me and said, okay, you will be happy when you're in this relationship or happy when XYZ shows up. And I found the secret was when I found my own happiness, Right it attracts all the other happy people <laughs> who wants to take care of somebody or be in a relationship with someone that needs you to support their happiness 24 seven. It's not even humanly possible. No, it's, it's called codependency. Right. And yeah, uh, yeah it really is. I mean, it, there's something about, you know, understanding this, this, this kindness we can have for ourselves, And then, you know, and this is really how I got into the masculine, the feminine essences, because when I had that intervention with Tony, you know, I was a very masculine woman. And I look back on the pictures of that day or that night or God, it went on for hours. It felt like it was years. I don't even recognize who she is. Like that woman does not exist anymore. Um, and not just because of the way I look, but really the way I process um, information and how I can bring in that masculine energy, um, you know, when I'm in go mode and then how I choose to stay more in the flow mode. And so, um, and that makes the world a better place. I, I really like to run everything through the filter of is the world better if I is the world better, for example, me being here with you, you know, so that way I, I get, I get to decide, I have agency over my body, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's more of, I want to light up the world um, just by, you know, what I'm doing and, and who I'm serving. So that particular time that you asked about, you know, not only changed my life, but has changed a lot of lives in, in the process because um, I can speak truth and also with all the life's experience and of course, all the uh, teachers I've worked with. I mean, I know that I'm coaching and teaching you know, all the women I'm working with that it comes from a place of authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. so important. We do we tend, tend to do that. that. Now I have now a little, have a little feedback. feedback. We, have, um, we have a lot of no, stuff. Good. Um, let's see here. Do you have headphones at all or a headset? I, I'm talking, I have a mic, I'm on a microphone. Okay. Let's see if the, okay, that's better. Whatever, I don't know if you did something or magic happened. <laughs> magic. Yes, that'll be, that'll be taken care of. Um, okay, so basically something happens where there's a time of awareness that shows up. And I think that you mentioned that awareness comes first when breaking a pattern. Yeah. And with all the people I've worked with and myself, you don't wake up one day, you don't listen to or go to a coach or wake up the next day and like, boom, you're a hundred percent different. And <laughs> it takes time. And every time it's like baby steps where, oh, whoops, I'm doing that pattern again. Okay, back up, but it's the awareness. And in that many times people get angry with themselves or maybe their loved ones that are helping them through um, creating new patterns are very frustrated because, uh, you know, hey, you didn't get to that point <laughs> in one day. <laughs> and and that anger is is really not helpful, even your especially your own, where it's like, oh, I failed again. I didn't meet the, the new standard I set for myself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's something that's really tricky because that's where people tend to give up right when they're really close to getting to the other side. It's awareness, it's forgiveness of self and starting the next day or that next moment to go back to the new habit and not be beating yourself up. No, 100%. I mean, I, you know, I, we like to call it triple A, which I learned from Dr. Epstein, right? You have the awareness and then you have the acknowledgement. 
um, you know, when, when two people come together and then you can accept that. And, you know, and I know to for your for the audience here, accepting is not resignation. What it does, it actually allows your channels to open. So energetically, you have more resources. You know, I mean, truthfully, as I was um, I had gone to the back, I'm, I'm home. Imagine that I had gone to the back uh, to like wash my hands and like do my hair a little bit. And um, something had my husband had said something to me. Um, and we had a, a meeting today with our business coach and a couple of things came up and I could feel like an old, I call it whack-a-mole. Like when something from the past is like, oh, there it is. Yeah. And I, I have really great tools on how to actually, you know, move these things through me. I think, you know, to your point, being a, we can become aware, but it's the next step. What are we going to do? And what I like to teach, you know, with my clients and programs is that what I've been taught is that you feel to heal, that we can go grab that mole over here and then we can squish it down and it's going to pop up someplace else. But what if we just actually allow ourselves to move with it? And in the feminine space, what I say is that the more nonlinear movement we can do, the more we clear the, our channels. And so, um, and then that's where we actually, instead of making feeling guilt and shame wrong, although you, we know that's the lowest level of consciousness, but we also, you know, it's gonna pop up. And then the next minute, if we actually can just you know, allow ourselves to move through it, mm -hmm. there's going to be something else that's there. Um, and I really believe that we can have two opposing emotions at the same time. And the sooner that we can actually make them okay, mm -hmm. but we don't have to coddle them, right? then I think there's something something there. Yes, there's something incredibly healing about uh, having space for the emotions. Yeah. And as you know, I lost my son yes. in December and he had a heart condition. We found out in fifth grade, he al we almost lost him then. And so it was something that you always worry about, but you're like, go live your life, have a beautiful, fun, happy life. And, yes. you know, and so, when that happened, my fam my my daughter moved home with me, and they were best friends, brother sister Ooh. best 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 friends. So it was mm -hmm. so hard, and we did you know therapy, grief counseling. We talked a lot. She's studying psychology. She's been through Chloe Madonna's training when she was Great. very young, and so we we were able to really go through the emotions. I mean, getting angry. <laughs> Yes, yelling and crying, and and we made space for that to heal because if we didn't, we would start having physical ailments. We would start having things show up. Oh God, I got goosebumps all over my body. That is so. Um, you know, I lost my best friend in, in October, and I was pretty public about it and and showed the anger. I want to show women you know, and that it's okay to show their emotions. It made a lot of people uncomfortable for sure. I honor you so much and actually, you know, allowing your daughter to come in, number one, and, and y'all do that together and teach that because that not only heals, you know, what's happening here, but generations to come. I mean, that's so beautiful. I I can only imagine, I only have one one son and uh, that's Cameron. And I, I was feeling you, you know, then, and I'm feeling you now. Um, there's, there's nothing, I, I can't even fathom that. So, yeah. yeah. And the feeling part, letting that feeling show up really brought even my daughter and I to a more feminine space. Yeah, we I can imagine. Yeah, we weren't in the survival and it's, it's such a beautiful process. It's such a beautiful thing to let that unfold. And so a lot of us are, are stuck in a masculine. I'm and curious for you though. I'm gonna ask, may I ask you a question? Yes. Okay. Um, if you had not being from, and I, I'm, I, I live in Florida, which I don't really consider the South, but I work with women around the world. Like I literally have five countries represented right now in one of my programs. It's fascinating to me how little um, experiencing emotions, grief, for example, um, or anger, or even like righteous jealousy in a way, because jealousy can actually be artful if your heart's open. Like I believe everything actually is okay with your open heart. But I'm curious for you, because um, I can imagine that kind of grief you've never experienced before losing your son. Was it natural for you, because you've done so much beautiful work, that that was easy for you to embrace? Um, to to go there, or did you go into hyper toxic masculine? Just let's stay focused. Let's not put our head down, and let's not do anything because I don't want to feel it. I, I I am curious. Not at all. I <laughs> we felt everything, and I think I went into mother mode 
I yeah. have six children total. So I adopted three, three of my own. And so with that, I had all the kids and I did go into mother mode, um, mothering them, mothering myself, and then really living through the emotions and sharing with them. If I'm open with my children about what I'm going through and we can talk about, hey, now you get to help me. And then tomorrow or in the middle of the night, you're going to come to my room and I'm going to help you. That's what it was with me opening and, and being surrendering to that. Yes. They were able to also surrender to that emotion. Well, you're such a great uh, role model in that space. Um, I didn't realize that you had had adopted kids. I, I don't know if you know this, John and I, John and I, I, that's been a dream of mine since I was 12. So we actually just finished the home study process and all the things. So uh, people think we're crazy because we're in our 50s now and we wanted we want to bring this in. But I've, this is a dream of mine. Right. This kind of like was my big my big do over. So that's neat. I love that you gave the kids that that ability. I mean, I, I would actually would love for you to speak to some of my my groups um, in this space for them. Actually, they can listen to this, of course, because it is fascinating how much women especially judge their own emotions. And so um, and don't want their kids to know. Um, my parents divorced when I was 12, thought, thinking that we that we didn't know what was going on. Right. And um, by them not acknowledging what was happening, it actually forced my, you know, like my brother and I to live a lot older than we needed to be. So the freedom that you've given your six kids is, you know, so huge. And I'm sure that he is. Um, well, so that was so your daughter, how is she doing now? How is she doing now? She lost her best friend. I mean, we talk about it. There are days, there's holidays, there's things that show up that's like, okay, it hits us hard. Something will happen and we'll talk about it and we'll be okay with experiencing that again because grief doesn't end. You just have a different relationship with it yeah. and a spiritual relationship with your loved one. And so with that, she's doing so well. She, um, you know, imagine my son passes away, Her bro she loses her brother and then COVID hit. <laughs> And it was like, really, you've got to be kidding us. And so it was <laughs> one thing after another. And she decided to go to school full time. She did online, uh, the university online. So now she is graduating with two degrees and wow. of going for the PhD for psychology and getting licensing next and this and that. And so with that, she's still in college, but she's getting two degrees and she also works part time. And she actually works at a place that's a home for young teenage girls, it's a foster care placement agency for young teenage girls and okay. their babies. So they're either pregnant or they have a baby. So okay. my daughter gets to really <laughs> be in the feminine too with, with holding all these beautiful new babies and helping young girls that actually, she looks younger than some of them. She looks 16, even though she's like 25 now, <laughs> but she's holding the babies and she's also has to be really strict with the girls and this and that. So she's doing so well. And she talks with them about loss and grieving at times when something happens in their own life. And so she's, she's living her work and, and really helping others. I think that's something even in Tony Robbins breakthrough programs, where the first thing he says to do is go help somebody else. You yeah. listen, you cannot feel sorry for yourself and serve at the same time. We just want to make sure that we're not serving so we don't feel there's a big difference. Yeah. Um, that's great. There's actually an organization here. Uh, it's called Alpha House. And there's um, same thing. And it is because grief is, does not always come at a loss of, from a death of a person like leaving the earth. It could be. Um, the loss of a dream that, you know, that you no longer will have. I mean, they could be the same thing that you thinking about your son and him getting married, for example, or it, a lot of people at, talk about grief. I mean, John, my husband and I, we do a lot of work together and talking about bringing couples together and magnifying their problems. Mm -hmm. You know, many, many people have come to us in the past year, you know, wanting either out or they want to actually amplify what they have or fix what they didn't even know was there. And so grieving the loss of, you know, what was, I mean, that was something we experienced a lot through COVID is um, how can we see the, how can we see the gift in it? Of course, but also like, life will never quite be the way it was. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if you don't have the power of the pivot, like many people with that mindset, then, then you're going to be suffering um, a lot. And so I, I actually see that there's, um, 
even I have clients of mine now that Mother's Day is coming up and some of them have not been able to, you know, have a child. And, you know, it's to be very sensitive to that as well, but also be able to move through it um, and not just coddle it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. That's that makes me think of when I first had my I've had one son and I was told by multiple doctors that there's no way you could have another baby. Just impossible. So mm -hmm. that's why we did foster to adopt. And I came through the foster care system as a young girl okay. and emancipated at 15, this and that. So, so I wanted to give back anyway. We ended up with this sole contract of adopting these three beautiful children. Then I got pregnant. And I said, oh, I thought this was impossible. This is eight years later, eight years. And I said, how is this happening? Then, you know, I, I go back. And my kids are, my last two are 14 months apart. I go back and I said, I don't know, there's something wrong. I'm gaining weight. And I feel bloated. What's happening? And they said, well, you're pregnant again. I said, how's that possible? Did, did you make a mistake and leave one in there? <laughs> <laughs> there? The doctors were laughing and I was like, this is, how is this? I was told it was impossible, but it was a soul contract. And it's something that happens that whether it's aligned that you adopt or help other children, if you're called to be with children, the more you can connect and hold babies and have children in your life, either it opens that you adopt or that you end up having your own child in one way or another um, through maybe a surrogate or whatever's needed. So be open to that. And I totally believe it was that soul contract that guided situation that happened where we are supposed to have all these children in the family. Incredible. Thank you for sharing that. So, so did I hear you, you were, you were adopted, did you say as a teenager? Is that what you said? Um, well, actually I was homeless 10 to 13 and a half. And then from there I went to foster care. I didn't know there was such a thing. So I thought it was kind of cool. And I did that for a few years. I emancipated at 15. There you go. That's what I heard. Got yes. It. So, so that was my experience. And it, I mean, I even went to a camp for really bad kids when I was emancipating, like they, they had killed somebody or taken an eye out. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm emancipating. I had to do a darn thing, but, but it was a six month process. I'm in a, like a prison camp for young kids. And I got to know all the kids inside the facility and mm. I got to talk to them on a soul level and learn about what what happened what made them do what they did and it changed the way i can relate to other people mm -hmm. see beyond the story of what happened so you that that's incredible i um just knowing you as i've known you through the years gosh it's been almost it's been eight almost eight years now oh my gosh um so thinking of that and you know we do we volunteer with some different organizations and such in the foster system it's um just going through MAP classes, like the parent certification. I mean, I didn't even realize that that was embodiment when I first got the certification years ago, where they actually had you act out, you know, what it would be like for you to be a foster mom or, you know, adopted mom. And then, um, you know, you have something happen with, with this child and it would allow you to get inside of, like embody what it would feel like to be a parent to a child in this space. In other words, like they are, they're testing you because they don't trust that you're actually, that your love's going to last. So they're testing you. And so what do you do? So they had us, what I call embodiment practice is what we do with our clients in a way, you know, when a woman tests a man, for example, because she's not sure if he's going to stay, it's that same thing. And a lot of that can come from a place of insecurity or wounds um, and then not. So you learned at such an early age. So it makes complete sense mm -hmm. why that would happen. That's so, I didn't know that about you. That is really great. I may have to call you for some, for well, some, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, some, some. I may have to call you for some information or, or some advice or just some love. Yeah, I actually have a heart to adopt o older children, and so, um, and there's definitely a need for that. And so, we shall see. We shall <laughs> see to be revealed. Yes, it's when you're called to do it, it'll align, and you will find that the the child that's meant to be in your life is going to show up and they're going to be your teacher as much as you are theirs. And it's, it's just, it's that beautiful. It's a, it's just an incredible situation and it changes everybody's life. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That, that's for, anybody, for anybody listening in, who's thinking about 
adopting or foster care. There are programs to get started where you can do respite care, and that's where you are doing part-time. You get approved to uh, be a backup foster parent. So a lot of times the children aren't allowed to leave a state and the parent, the foster family wants to vacation to see a relative or whatever. And so you'll be a respite care provider. And that's a good way to kind of get a feeling for what is this going to be like and right. it's going to work for our family. That's one way. There's also mentorship. I still mentor at two different girls' homes. And that's something where I actually help with the emancipation and getting ready for uh, job interviews and to get on their own when they never have been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it is it's yeah. the things that we the little things that we take through ready for life here in, in St. Pete. I mean, it's fascinating the things that we take for granted. Um, you know, hearing that these are for kids that that have, kids are now adults and aged out of foster care, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like that no man, like the, the the misfit toys, so to speak, for Rudolph. I mean, you see these beautiful souls, and they are just I mean, talk about grit and work ethic and um but talk about patterns you know things like that and these these beliefs that have been passed down um so you know i it's i love that we have that in common thank you for sharing that too it's um you're right i mean just if you feel called to work with children um you know there's a thousand and five ways you can work and millions where you can work with, with children and just you know show up and you're right this i've learned so much just from my desire to want to do this um and also, you know, in my former marriage, I mean, grieving, grieving that that wasn't going to happen. You know, he, he changed his mind. And I remember that grief of realizing that that, that that was over. And then, of course, realizing that it wasn't, um, you know, when I, there was like a rebirth, no pun intended, you know, so, to, to some degree. So um, how are how are you? How are you actually, how is it working now with COVID? Are you actually able, where you are, are you able to actually still go in and see the kids go to the facility? Are you able to actually still be active? Uh, yes, for some, but you have to test. And it just depends on your state and where you're at. So yeah. like my daughter, she just has to do a regular test. And they test all the girls in their home a lot more than they used to be. And it's, it's a little bit more restricted right now. But it's still something, it's great to get started now. Because just like you mentioned, there's lots of training that you have to do yes. before you even get to have contact with the kids. And so... I also do some online things with with some that are in the home that I grew up in a little bit was David and Margaret home in Laverne. And so with that, that's an all girls home. So I still kind of am involved with that a little bit. And it's just they love to hear about somebody that has gone through the process and actually survived and got out the other side and, and have success. Yeah, it's interesting too. What, one of the things that we've, we've brought to where uh, where we are is a theta healing, theta healing to some of the to some of the the uh, the people that are in the program. You know, because I, I don't know if you're familiar with theta. Are you familiar with theta healing? Yeah, I mean that's been interesting to see, like, because some of these things, like I mentioned, you you test on a core level, like anything spoken to you or over you since the moment you were conceived, you can imagine as you really can imagine, um, not feeling wanted or you know a genetic level, anything that's um, seven generations back from the moment you were conceived, and then a history level, and then a soul level, because trauma can happen in the womb. I mean, it's just passed down sometimes. So that's uh, it's just it's beautiful to to. And it still amazes me in this process, meeting some of these kids and just what they they're just what they desire is something that has just been so basic and just kind of given to me through the years. You know, something that's just like a, st a stable home. So I actually started this process as a single woman and, um, you know, I'm married now. And that was that was one of my in order for me to I would need. John didn't realize he didn't know if he wanted to have more kids. And that was my, you know, a few years ago was. In order for me to continue to date you or exclusively, this is my dream. And so that was uh, that was something we didn't see each other for a couple of weeks. He came back all prayed up and we started that process. So um, you got to you got to hang hang tight to your dreams. Right. Yes. And that's something to, to kind of discuss is when dating and finding the right alignment. I mean, I think that for me, what I found is just being really honest help so much because you're going to waste your time and right. their time if it's something that's really not aligned and you know maybe you want to waste time for a while and that's all good too <laughs> yeah. well but, but, no, but, 
And to your point, I mean, you and I, you've always, you know, thrown out some great zingers, you know, in the dating world through the years, you know, you would get, send me a message out of the blue, or I, I actually was looking at like a thread of ours and I was like, oh, like always some good, some good things. Right. You know, and I, I like to call it dating intentionally. I mean, I, I did something that I like to call a masculine cleanse where I, you know, I really, it wasn't just about being celibate for a certain amount of time. It really was looking at my relationship to the masculine, not only the masculine and the gender of a man, but also my own masculine, my ma the masculine in you. And mm -hmm. how's my relationship with all of that? And um, that was something obviously I've learned you know, through the years with teachers. And I didn't realize that, you know, that manipulative part of us sometimes that um, we'll use our femininity to get ahead or whatever that is. And I don't mean like the casting couch kind of a thing. I mean, but you know, you know what I mean? I'm sure that's, but that's totally toxic feminine, but just that, are we getting a dopamine hit, you know, when um, the guy at the mailbox smiled at us or whatever it is. I mean, it's like this to be, to pay attention, where are we getting um, our happy back to what you've said in the beginning, where is our happy coming from? So for me, I was at uh, this masculine cleanse, you know, for 90 days after I had done a essentially a nervous system scrub and with some of my teachers and, and in my trainings. And then when I started dating again, I dated fully and full on. Like you said, I was totally honest. Like I mentioned, you know, I was dating intentionally. I was practicing dating and, um, you know, in a space of revealing, revealing, not only revealing like what I desire, but responsiveness you know, which would mean if I thought a man was a pig, I may wink at him, for example. Or if he says something that was kind of off color, I may say, ouch. Or if he said something that really lit me up, I would just be very responsive, which is, of course, us and our feminine, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, in a world where so many women are working and super successful, you know, the last thing I, I found that a man wants, and this, this, is, this works on online dating too, is to be met with another masculine, I call it the redwood. So, you know, here there's so many of us that are on this screen like this and we're sitting like this and there's no polarity when mm -hmm. we're both in Redwood. So I have clients that, you know, they are in whatever state they're in. I'm in Florida and I know you and I have more, you know, we're, we're a little more free than some areas. Um, but some of the, some people can't get out and about. I might like, expand your whatever online dating, whatever it is, and practice dating in the way that I'm suggesting, like really practice the way, how does your body feel in the way is he sitting? Can you actually have a conversation where you're revealing, watch how you're showing up. Um, if adoption is something that I'd rather be alone than be with a man who is not for adoption, own that. I'd rather be alone than be with a man who doesn't have an entrepreneurial spirit. So I have a whole process that I like to take women through. So when they do show up, you know, in this space that they really know what matters to them. Um, Cause it does matter. It does matter. I have a funny story. Do we have time for me to tell you a funny story? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Go ahead. So when John and I, when I, when I was doing this whole dating thing, um, I actually was going to leave Florida. My son had gone off to college. I was empty nesting. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to move to Santa Monica. That was like where I wanted to go. I had my, that was what I was putting my house in the market all going to happen. And my long story short, um, Cameron had come home from college and him, his girlfriend had broken up and he was heartbroken. Um, this was like three or four years ago. So I had never seen him heartbroken before mm -hmm. single mom, only son, all of a sudden the guilt hit me. If I, if only I would have had have chosen better, if only I would have had a good role model for him, if only, if only like, whoa, whoa is me. Right. And I remember um, it was Christmas time. And as I mentioned, and I was sitting in the corner of the den and I could see my Christmas tree. All the lights were off. I was admiring the Christmas tree and um, I was having a glass of wine and we had gone to dinner. He had gone off with friends. And I uh, was, I had the music on and, and the song, Mary, Did You Know? Mary, Did You Know? Which is a Christmas song, which is so beautiful. One of my favorites. And I started laughing and I thought, who am I? I mean, no matter what your faith is, but if you listen, if you believe that Mary was a virgin and she has this baby and, you know, everybody in town thinks that she's all the things and I'm laughing going, and here I am feeling sorry for myself. Okay. And I just felt like this really deep connection, like to our, to creator. I was like, wow, that's so huge. Very humbling. And so I, in true um, fashion to be very efficient, I thought, 
what an interesting deep story. I had several men, five to be exact, who wanted to come see me for New Year's Eve or like, why don't you come here or whatever? And I didn't feel really into any of them. I was in practicing. So I sent a voice note, basically told the story I just told you, the voice note, and I sent it to all five of them. And the ones that I that actually were so into me, couldn't wait to see me, three of them have never had children. It was fascinating. Um, right. And then so there there was John, my husband, who I actually did not want to be the one because he lived in Florida. Like I didn't want to stay here. He was my practice partner. Anyway, I remember looking at my phone and I went because he sent a message and said, mm -hmm. I know we haven't known each other for very long, um, but I know that you're an amazing mother and I can only imagine that that Cameron's going to be OK or something very, you know, it, whatever. And I just remember to throw the phone down. I'm like, no, it can't be the one. And uh, we went out the next night and we've been together ever since. Um, you know, and it's fascinating. We have to, in my opinion, and I know you and I, we've talked about calling in the one, heal all those bits and pieces that have us bringing it, calling in the one that may not be the one. They're the one for us right then, because I yeah. truly believe we bring in our mirror match. And mm -hmm. so it's a matter of really healing those pieces so we don't keep attracting that again and again and again. That's right. You That's can right. enjoy you can your mirror match. match. <laughs> now it's now it's right? What's up? <laughs> it's like, nope, we're going to up level that right now. So, um, and that's still, listen, for me, uh, honestly, I uh, married a beautiful soul. And I really, he's a beautiful, conscious, awakened man. I feel very blessed. And, you know, I, my teacher said, okay, so now you're married. Now the game's on. Now this is when, because, you, you know, the best spiritual practice is what I believe is to be in a monogamous relationship with someone that you know is committed, growth oriented, and that the two of you will grow together because you're going to trigger each other. Mm -hmm. And so um, there is no more. I used to think I, I would only attract emotionally unavailable men until I realized that I was actually also emotionally unavailable. It just showed up in different forms. So that was a big aha for me and really changed, uh, changed my life and changed the way I sought out. It actually changed the way I sought out um, teachings and help right? And coaching. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I no longer wanted to get that, uh, that dopamine push from just talking about it. I wanted to really divorce the story, you know, and, uh, and retrain the brain. So that's what I did. Yeah. Wow. So now uh, I would love for you to share maybe an example of how people could get started with your programs, what, what the work looks like. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Um, so Sacred She was born essentially, uh, you know, from my my healing journey to stop, you know, stop calling in situations. It wasn't just men. It was actually it would be a business, for example, or even friendships that were quite toxic. Right. Um, or sabotaging my own dreams like adopting. Right. So uh, what I've done is I actually have this incredible program um, where I coach women one on one and also in what I call the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And I take you down this journey where we're going to, you know, bring to light everything that's wonderful in your life and maybe those areas that need to be illuminated so we can um, shift them. And I use hypnosis and brain training and embodiment. Um, I really believe that the key is, is that, again, like I mentioned, to feel, to heal. So we use movement. And I don't mean just dance. I mean, but I mean, you know, how how can you artfully let your partner know that he needs to take the garbage out for the 10th time without nagging him? <laughs> I really t teach the differences between men and women. And um, and so there's a free there's a free online community we have on Facebook, which is the Sacred She Society. And that's sacred with a K. And the reason why. Um, and then there's also my sisterhood program, which is my intensive program, and then the 101, and that's an application only. But the reason why I use the term sacred is something that actually Donnie, Dr. Epstein, shared with me. You know, we don't have to work on anything divine. So when you hear people talking about teaching the divine feminine and the di divine masculine, well, if you truly believe that, that we come from the divine, 
we're perfect. Mm -hmm. We don't need to work on anything from the divine. And I woke up in the middle of the night, you know, a while back, a couple of years ago, and I thought, yeah, this is our agency. This is our free will. So how can we in this moment, like I'm talking to you, you know, in a very masculine way, sharing with you all, all the things, but also, you know, you can't see me, but I've got, you know, I have like my flowers here and I have my candle on and I've got, I'm, I'm touching my furry rug. And how can I bring in more feminine into my life? Um, so what I find is that women who are very driven have kind of lost that zest. They've lost their juiciness. And so I like to show that women can actually have it all. Um, and it starts with like reuniting with who they, who they were as a little girl. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of take it from there. I love that. And we are coming to the end of our time. So I'd love for you to share where people can connect to get started and learn more about all you're doing. Beautiful. So I have a great quiz, which actually the sandysembler.com slash quiz. And that actually will take you, uh, you'll take a quiz. And just because you might be a woman doesn't necessarily mean you're leading your relationship in the feminine. And so I just invite you to take that three minute quiz to see where you land and um, make sure you check your spam for your results. And it'll you'll start getting information from there. And then there is a, a Facebook group as well. Like I said, you can just find me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and that's a great way to start. Um, we're actually, we have a sisterhood that's going to be launching again in a couple months. Um, so we're taking applications. But I think the quiz is a good space to go like, wait a minute, how am I walking in this space? And anyone can reach me on, uh, on a DM. You know, private messaging is fine. All right. Well, thank you again for being a guest on the show. And for those listening in, we'll be back after these messages. Appreciate you. All right. Welcome to Dear Sheila, answering real questions with real solutions to help reboot your life. I keep attracting the wrong person. How to attract a healthy relationship. Dear Sheila, after years of struggling to finally get out of a very controlling and abusive relationship, I finally started dating again. The problem is that I keep dating the same type of man. The face changes, yet the characteristics remain the same. My friends always want to introduce me to this person or that, yet I tend to not be at all attracted to who they are sending my way. Then I find someone on my own, and it's Mr. Wrong all over again. My question is, what am I doing wrong, and how can I attract a healthy lover into my life? Signed, Lonely Heart. Dear Lonely Heart, this is definitely the time for rebooting and reinventing your relationship standards. Often in the case of love, when one attracts an unhealthy relationship, it has a lot to do with what they experienced as love from the past. The good news is that with self-love and awareness, the attraction begins to move toward healthy love and relationships overall. Let's run this situation through the Boots formula. Throughout life, one can find themselves facing a difficult situation that often catches them by surprise. Over the years, I saw the patterns in all the times I've had to reboot and in how I've helped my friends and clients get through a hard time and quickly back into action. Ultimately, I came up with the Boots formula. The B in the Boots formula is for being. It is about who you are being and all you are doing and who you need to be during this situation. You are going to have to be authentic and create love standards based on your needs. Write out a perfect day where you have that new love. Who are you being in this vision? What type of activities do you do together and apart? How do you show up differently? Being honest about what you really want in a partner, not what society wants, your family or friends. The first O in the Boots formula is for orientation. In order to get the outcomes you desire, you must be honest here. How often do you practice self-love? A healthy and healed individual attracts a healthy partner. Do you date people that you already know are not aligned? Where are you now with the other relationships in your life? Your friends, family, coworkers? Does your current peer group match your core values, essence, and vision? 
The next O in the boot formula is for order of operations. Now that you know who you need to be and your orientation, you can decide in which order you must do things. Step away from any relationships that no longer feel right or aligned. Practice saying yes to what you love to do and no to invitations to events that do not fuel your soul. This is a practice for setting boundaries and a new standard to attract the healthy relationships you deserve and desire. In the long run, the order in which you do things is really going to drive your results. The T in the Boots formula is for thinking. This is where your mindset comes in. Stop waiting for a new relationship to show up before you are happier. Choose to live in a grateful and happy state now and in each step in the process. Be proud of yourself for stepping away from what was not aligned. And remember that a genuine smile is one of the most attractive things a person can wear. You will find as you choose your happiness now and express your truth and essence, the person who you are seeking will find you. You will also notice that you are no longer attracted to or attracting people that do not align. The S in the Boots formula is for stepping up. This is the part that puts all the pieces together and now you step into action. The time is now for us to collectively work together to rebuild this year. My hope is that this video series and my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, helps. In my book and on my website, I provide plenty of free resources for anyone dealing with a rock bottom situation to reinvent and reboot their business and personal life. If you have a question for Dear Sheila, message me at www.sheilamack.com. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. And back by popular demand. I am offering the Bootstraps and Bra Straps Book Club for your group, your team, and this is a great way to get started going through the Boots formula to help you rebuild, reboot, and reinvent your business and personal life on your terms with a group of friends. The Book Club meets by phone one time per week and we start a new session each month going through the book. So if you want to sign up, you can message me at DearSheila.com, DearSheila.com, and in the comments, write book club, and somebody on my team will get back to you to get you started. All right, and for those just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show on NBC's KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. And I wanted to share something really special that I am actually getting for my new home. And that is a Dream Pod. It is a special flotation home pro product. And this is a salt flotation device. Now, I've actually started to go to float centers in California and um, they are now around the world where you can go to a float center and float with tons of salt in the water and it's a sensory deprivation experience where you are able to really just fully relax. I've had the most creative insights show up for me during this time of deep meditation. They also have music that is a meditative music that you're able to listen to while you're in this float bath and now they have products where you can have a dream pro home edition where you can soak at home and do your daily float or you can also get one for your business they also have a mineral soaker out now and for those of you that love the ice baths there is actually now a dream pod ice bath that you can bring to your home. It is a home edition, home sized product. And so I'm actually gonna start with the float and move into getting the ice bath as well. And if you'd like to learn more about it, you can visit, I have a, a special link um, for those interested. Go to www.dream-pod.com slash question mark partner equals Sheila Mack 
and they have some incredible specials they are delivering all over the United States and I would love to hear about your experience so again go to www.dream-pod.com slash question mark partner equals Sheila Mack and look into getting your own float device or ice bath or mineral soaker at home or for your business a home pro deluxe float device all right and stay tuned we'll be back in a moment all right if you are just tuning in this is sheila mack host of nbc's sheila mack show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. And one of the things we did mention during our talk today is there is a special resource that not a lot of people know about. It is the 211 resource. So if you Google 211 or call 211 in your state or province in Canada, you will find a lot of help for friends, family, or if you need help yourself. Uh, 211 is a free and confidential service that helps people across North America find the local resources they need. They are there to help you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So keep that in mind. Uh, things that they can help with are food, resources, mental health, health care, housing, transportation, income utility assistance, and much more. You have Mastermind Live Weekly Courses, and those are available at SheilaMack.com, S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C.com. I have a giveaway gift for all my listeners, especially for beautiful, authentic you. Request your free introduction to the Boots Formula and Boots Meditation today at www.sheilamack.com slash boots meditation sheila s-h-e-i-l-a-m-a-c dot com slash b-o-o-t-s meditation all right so here it is my latest book i have to let you know something just between you and me this book is not one size fits all just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. To grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation, it is now available on Audible as well as on Amazon and Kindle and at www.sheilamack.com.